What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Cha-Ching! Road Brothers by Mark Lawrence. So for those that don't know, Road Brothers is a collection of short stories of characters from the Broken Empire. So basically this is just, you know, another way to jump back into the Broken Empire and experience a little bit more chaos for all the fans of the series. But before I get into it, I do want to say that I am kind of reviewing uh, the Road Brothers edition that is the newest edition. I believe that there are two different versions of the short story collection. One contains 10 stories. This one contains 15. 14 about Jorgen the Road Brothers and one about our cowardly prince Jalen Kendith from the Red Queen's War series. Also, I just want to kind of let you guys know I am not going to kind of break down each individual story. More, I'm just going to kind of go over what I liked about it. I will pick out a few from the collection and then also I'll just kind of get into why you should pick this up especially if you're a fan of the Broken Empire. One of the first things I want to get into is just the overall timeline of the stories because they will vary. So it kind of is important to know before getting into it because you might break into these stories a little too early. I do think that they this short story collection contains quite a few spoilers. Um, especially in the footnotes that Mark Lawrence leaves himself at the end of each story. Now, these footnotes are amazing, and I wouldn't want the, the I wouldn't want this book without them. But that being said, they are there are spoilers not just in the stories, but in these footnotes as well. So just beware. I do think personally, as someone who has read the trilogy, both trilogies here in this world. I do think that it's the safest time to read this book would be in between books two and three. But honestly, overall, it wouldn't hurt to just wait, finish the trilogy, and then jump back in to Road Brothers for just that extra bit of goodness here. One of the things that fans of the series are going to love about the book is just the amount of history and insight we are going to get into some of our characters. Now, most people that have read the trilogy will tell you that, you know, the Road Brothers don't really begin to feel like characters. They don't necessarily fully flesh themselves out until, like, until book two. So there is a bit of, like, catching up kind of feel to them but I do think that Mark Lawrence delivers you all the information you need to catch up there is just some really good stuff in here like I said you will get to see a little bit of history before some of our brothers became road brothers or you know how they did uh, one of my favorite things as far as just kind of information that we got about our characters for those that watch these videos of mine, you know I am a big fan of Macon, Macon Bortha. And this whole book starts out with a short story of his that gives us massive amounts of insight into the motivations of Macon, specifically when it comes to, I guess, his failures when dealing with Jorg, what it seems to be failures. This story itself really fleshes out why Macon really is down to follow Jorg, why he will follow Jorg to the ends of the earth. Because besides, if you haven't read this book, then the only motivation you're going to get is what Macon gives Jorg at the end of book two, King of Thorns. Another thing that fans of the series are going to love about this book is just that little extra world building and lore nuggets that Mark Lawrence delivers here, especially one that I could think of that really cleared up a question that had been kind of somewhat plaguing me. A while back, there was a discussion online whether or not the, the thorns that young Jorg Ancrath climbs out of are actually razor wire or are they, you know, thorns. And I always loved like kind of contemplating that. Well, I don't really have to contemplate that anymore because Mark Lawrence gives me the answer in Road Brothers. Specifically in the short story of Sleeping Beauty, we will get awesome, awesome insight into the world of the Broken Empire. It gives us all the lore that we need to understand those thorns. And I just felt personally as a huge fan of this series that this is like some of these stories, just the one story alone made this whole book worth it. And this was definitely one of them. Another one of the stories that I really enjoyed was the one called A New Troy. Now, this story was very impressive to me because it contains everything that a full length story uh, contains. 
It had its own, like, own pace that pushed a level of tension. It really put Jorg Ancrath on display for his wicked intelligence. It was just a fun ride. It also contains, this uh, is one, one of the stories I do think that should be, like, you need to pump your brakes and make sure you're not reading this ahead of time because it could spoil some stuff within the Broken Empire trilogy books. Uh, but it also puts on display that relationship between Jorg and Catherine, one that if you are a, a fan that that was craving more of that relationship, here you go. One of the things I noticed while reading these short stories was, you know, I'm used to these this cast and crew being rather dark and dastardly. But in some ways, Lawrence paints them in a brighter light. Now, I'm not saying he makes them angels, but we certainly get a lighter perspective for some of these guys. And I definitely want to mention there is a short story here for Father Gomst that really paints him in a different way for me, one that actually makes me sympathize with Father Gomps more than I already did, because honestly, I, I don't think I actually did ever sympathize with Father Gomps, but now I do. Possibly my favorite story of the bunch could be Mercy. Now, once again, it's a story where we pick up with Macon Bortha, um, and he's on somewhat of a revenge quest. And the company that he keeps along this little journey is actually pretty interesting. She's a nun, but not just any nun. She's a nun with a mercenary heart. Uh, I thought that was really cool, and that story itself, for me personally, because I am such a big fan of Macon, it was something I kind of needed as a, as a as a fan. I needed it for Macon. It was like closure for his character that I just needed as the reader. And so I really, really enjoyed this story. Um, like I said, there are few uh, stories here in this collection that just by themselves made it worth buying, and I definitely would count this among them. Now, as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, yes, absolutely, Road Brothers is for you, as long as you've read the Broken Empire trilogy, or at least the first two books. Honestly, like I said in the beginning, I kind of almost suggest just reading the trilogy as a whole first, and then coming back to read this. I don't think that Mark Lawrence puts anything in these short stories that is going to create a hurdle or some kind of roadblock that you can't get over. He's definitely not throwing anything at you that he hasn't already thrown at you in his books. It's, I, I think, honestly, that's his. the trilogy contains the more mind-bending shit. So in here, it's m much more of like an easy-peasy, you know straight and narrow i also just want to mention though guys this is a collection of short stories so there really isn't any other material that's built more for you <laughs> than short stories so that may that means that this book is just extremely accessible to you like you can pick it up put it down whenever you'd like it's not that long it's 15 stories 14 of the brothers and one of our cowardly <laughs> our cowardly prince jalen kendith they're all worth the read but like i said it's definitely worth your time you can get through it whenever you want at your own convenience and this is once again kind of rolling back to why i say read the trilogy first because then you can just kind of mow through this bad boy at your own leisure all right guys as always thanks for spending some time down here at the channel and to mark lawrence Agadoosh. we salute you down here at slowly red sir man thank you once again for giving us you know just a little extra material another way to for us to kind of tromp through the broken empire again Obviously, anytime you write something within this world, I'm going to read it, even if it's a story about Reich taking a shit in an outhouse, all right? All right. <laughs> if you guys are new, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And as always, peace.